welcome to this video and in this video we're going to have a look at one of the theories for galaxy formation so there's a, there's a few different theories and this one is kind of known as the bottom-up theory so we're going to have a look at how we get to kind of the large spiral galaxies and possibly the elliptical galaxies as well so in the bottom-up theory what's happening is that in the early part of the universe the early time you're going to get localized collapses in the matter they're basically kind of the, the sort of size of a star cluster. So the, the total mass of the local collapse is going to be the size of a star cluster. So we would kind of refer to those as like satellites or dwarf galaxies. So on the Milky Way, we have these star clusters orbiting around the outside. And they're kind of a similar sort of size to that of like a globular cluster or a dwarf galaxy. So you get these localized collapses. You get fairly small galaxies forming first. There's an example. So you get these dwarf galaxies forming. Now that's an image of an actual dwarf galaxy, but it isn't necessarily a dwarf galaxy that would have formed at the early parts during the formation process. This is just a small galaxy, but they're going to be kind of this sort of size anyway and shape. So when you've got those dwarf galaxies, you'll have quite a lot of them and they will then begin to merge. They will collide with each other and they will start to grow in size. So the resultant galaxy from the merger of a few dwarf galaxies, you're going to start to get a spiral galaxy forming. So you've got a nice spiral galaxy there on the right. <clears throat> now this is a simulation and it's modeling <clears throat> the actual formation of these dwarf galaxies. They then begin to collide. So you can see that there's like local collapses. As that is collapsing, they conserve things like angular momentum, so they, they spin up faster. You should be able to see them spinning up faster as they collapse and they collide, because that has to be conserved. Now, as those, those dwarf galaxies begin to collide, you're going to start to see the formation of the smaller spiral galaxies. Those smaller spiral galaxies will then collide as well. And then you get larger spiral galaxies forming. So you get galaxies a bit like the Milky Way, Andromeda forming. And then the final part of that is you then get the very large spiral galaxies colliding as well. So here you're going to have two spiral galaxies colliding, almost comparable to the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy. And the end point really is going to be an elliptical galaxy. So that basically increases the star formation, it reduces I mean, the gas content down. And then you're, at, you're left with more, a more spherical type of galaxy. So these larger spiral galaxies at the end point, you then get an elliptical galaxy. So they have more random motions. They're not necessarily orbiting like a disk. They are redder in color because it's older stars. They've got less gas content. So you get these elliptical galaxies forming, which don't look the same as a spiral galaxy. And they're obviously much bigger than these spiral galaxies. Now, the actual mergers or the collisions cause a huge increase in star formation. So here you've got two images of galaxies colliding taken by the Hubble telescope. And you can see some very bright blue regions and some pinky purple regions as well. Those are young, bright stars, which are the blue. And then you've got the ionized, like the, the ionized hydrogen regions. So these would be like your nebulas around those stars. They're being illuminated by the bright blue stars. So you can see there's a huge influx of star formation because the collisions cause a collapse of the gas. You get massive amounts of stars forming from that. And yeah, enter these elliptical galaxies. And some, some things, as I mentioned before, the differences between these last elliptical galaxies that are formed compared to the spiral galaxies is they don't have any gas in the gas has been depleted it's the stars are formed from it so there's no little to no gas left there's also little to no star formation occurring because there's no gas there to form the stars and they're not rotating like spiral galaxies they're more spherical the, the motions is a bit more random the way the stars move internally and they are populated by old red stars so the whole galaxy as a whole would appear redder now the bottom-up theory supports the observations better than some of the other theories. So we see a range of spiral galaxies, elliptical galaxies, we see them merging, we know they do merge. So the bottom-up theory works best 
with kind of our observations at the moment. So thank you for watching and if you enjoy then you can check out some of the other videos.